so glad you've chosen goldseek.com radio as your trusted source for business and financial news today's special guest pastor lindsey williams author of the energy non-crisis well my featured guest says that the nation is facing an economic calamity that could bankrupt more than 9 out of 10 U.S. homes. Pastor Lindsey Williams, author of The Energy Non-Crisis, he's also a pro-precious metals ownership pundit. He wants all Americans to prepare for imminent hyperinflation. Welcome back, Pastor Williams. A privilege it is to be with you today, Chris, especially considering (laughs) the technical difficulties you've had today. That was really quite something. Unable to dial out, unable to receive calls most of the time, but still... We had a dial tone, quite something, and you have quite a very high patience threshold. You know, Pastor Williams, you say the elite plan to have our troops invade Syria, maybe Saudi Arabia, and perhaps even Iran. Please tell us more. Well, Chris, what your audience is going to hear on Gold Seek Radio today will not be heard or read in any financial newsletter in the nation. Uh, It will not be heard on any telecast, there will be no liberal media that will be carrying this. And if it had not been by the providence of God that many years ago I was actually invited to be the chaplain to the elite of the world and had been able to make friends with some of these people that you hear about in the World Bank, the IMF, and the top oil company officials of the world, and know from them personally what is happening behind closed doors, I would have never known this. Everyone in your listening audience, I would urge them to please get a pencil and paper because you are going to want to take notes on what you hear today. It's going to affect your dinner table. It positively will affect your driving habits. It definitely is going to have a relationship to your family and your financial future. And I feel so honored that God would allow me by his providence to know these people to be told this by them so that in turn I can pass it on to you and help to save you much heartache. So, here goes. Just a matter of days ago, I received a very unusual email. Now, I need to start at this point because one little thing related to something so big that it covered the entire world, and this is the way it went. I received this email from this elitist, my friend, who still gives me information. He is a retired executive of Atlantic Richfield. He uh, is in his 70s. And this gentleman sent me a simple email, and it said, the Liberty Rig at Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, has stopped drilling. To me, it put up a red flag that was phenomenal. So I immediately picked up the telephone, called him, and I said, what is going on? Now, Let me try to explain this, because this reaches to Syria. What his explanation gave me had to do with the timing of the financial collapse. And it has to do with why Russia is doing what she is doing right now while you are listening to this broadcast in pulling her warships and all of her arms and supplies out of Syria. And Assad is, for all practical purposes, a dead man. You are going to hear things that you will see take place in weeks to come. And it all began with this simple expression, they have ceased drilling with the Liberty Rig at Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. Now, let me begin with this, explain it, and then go from there to Syria, to your financial pocketbook, and to your dinner table. And again, let me try to say, I feel so honored that God would let me know these things so in turn I can tell you and help you spare up you from so much heartache. And and the the elite, uh, this does not come from hearsay, hope so, think so, possibly could be. And this is the reason you won't find it other places, because if a person didn't know one of these people directly and intimately, they would have no way of knowing this. But you'll see it unfold right before your eyes. This Liberty Rig at Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, was put there one year ago, last summer, by BP Oil Company. This is America's big oil field. And they they brought to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, on the flotilla, the largest oil drilling rig that has ever been built on the face of the earth. Now, please, if you haven't done it in past, when I happen to be on this show, you heard me talk about it maybe, but please go on the Internet and look up Liberty Rig, 
Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, BP Oil Company. You are going to see something phenomenal. You, you'll see it with your own eyes. This huge, uh, in fact, BP Oil Company has spent over one billion. Now, you, you did hear me correctly. They have spent over one billion dollars in this process of getting this to America's oil field up on the Arctic Ocean in northern Alaska and drilling for one year's time, and now they stop drilling. They can't afford to do it, and I, and I knew that. So I called him and I said, what is this? And this was his explanation. They put this Liberty Rig on Gull Island. Now, if you don't know what Gull Island is, please the only place you'll ever find it on the face of the earth is in my book, The Energy and Non-Crisis, which was written in 1980. And I told something that was ordered classified material, but I was not told not to tell it, so I did. And it's the only place on the face of the earth you'll find it. If you want to go to Amazon Kindle, you can get a copy of my book, Energy and Non-Crisis, which is now out of print, but you can get it on Amazon Kindle. And I told about Gull Island and the Liberty Rig, the largest oil pool that's ever been discovered on the face of the earth, and how that I was in the room that day with the top eight oil company officials of the world who were watching the technical details of this pool of oil. Within 24 hours, it was ordered classified material. At the time, I asked the oil company official, I'll name him because he's passed away now. He, he uh, died a year ago. His name is Mr. Ken Fromm. He was a senior executive with Atlanta Gridgefield on duty that week. And I asked him, I said, Ken, why don't you release this oil to the American people? Why don't you let the great American dream have its way again and free enterprise operate the way it should? And his reply was, he said, Chaplain, we will not release that oil to the American people until we have the price of crude oil where we want it to go. That was 1976. Yes, you heard me correctly. They have intentionally kept that oil pool for 35 years while they waited on the price to get where they wanted. I asked him at the time, I said, where do you want the price of crude oil to go? At that time, it was $32 a barrel. He would not tell me what price they wanted it to go to. Before he died, he did let me know the price of crude oil. They want it to $150 a barrel. You have those pencils and paper. Please write that down. You will be paying somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 to $7 a gallon at the gas pump, and it is going to be very, very soon. Don't call me a prophet whenever it happens. All you need to do is say, Thank you, Lord, for letting Lindsay Williams be that that day to see it. I do not get this from visions or tea leaves or fortune tellers. This comes directly from the elite. You need to know it for the sake of your household so you can be prepared accordingly. Well, when I received this message that they had stopped the drilling with the Liberty Rig, the first thing that came to my mind is, why have they done it? So I asked this gentleman, I said, why? He said, well, it's a temporary stoppage, and he said, we will begin to drill again uh, whenever the price of crude oil gets where we want it to go. Folks, did you hear that? Whenever we want the price, get the price of crude oil to where we want it to go. Now, there are two desperate situations in the world today, and this is the reason that I contacted Chris at Gold Seek Radio just a day or so ago, and I said, Chris... I'd like to be on your show to tell your, your listening audience this. Folks, this is desperate. And, and, again, you won't get it on the evening news. There are two desperate situations in the world today. Number one, the elite are desperate. You heard me correctly. I know. They usually get their way. And, again, you've heard me say so many times there positively is a group of people on the face of the earth who control the world. They do exist. I know some of them. And they are desperate. That's right. They normally get their way. This time they're in trouble. Why did they stop drilling with the Liberty Rig temporarily? Why? Because of Syria. Yes. You, you must look up some things in relation to this, and I'll give them to you as we go along here for the next few moments. They stopped drilling with the Liberty Rig because they cannot go into that strata of oil and produce this super deep well. Please let me explain this very briefly. Back in the 70s, Russia drilled the first what they call 
wells, super deep well, oil wells ever drilled on the face of the earth. They call them Cola SG3 wells. You can find this on the Internet, and you'll find it fascinating reading. They went down after abiotic oil, not fossil fuel, and they went to over 40,000 feet. In fact, they went to 40,220 feet, I believe it was. And they discovered massive amounts of crude oil that is abiotic oil. And as a result, Russia last year surpassed Saudi Arabia as the number one oil-producing nation on the face of the earth. BP Oil Company wanted to get in on this. And as a result, they drilled in the Gulf of Mexico. And you know what happened. It was a total disaster. They went down approximately 40,000 feet, went through a granite strata of rock. They hit wellhead pressures of over 40,000 pounds per square inch. It blew the rig out, out of the Gulf. It blew the pipe out of the ground. It contaminated the entire Gulf of Mexico. It even affected the Gulf Stream, which is affecting the weather patterns in the Scandinavian countries, England, Scotland, Ireland, because the the uh, Gulf Stream gives them their warm water in the wintertime, and it was a disaster. Now they have gone to Prudhoe Bay. They've put the largest drill rig ever built on the face of the earth there for the drilling of oil, and they intended to go down over 40,000 feet. Now try to imagine 40,000 feet. You're in a commercial jet airliner. You're traveling from California to New York. The airplane climbs out to cruising altitude, which is approximately forty to 45,000 feet. You look down at the ground, and what do you see? That's correct. You see the depth of the oil well that, they, that Russia drilled and that BP Oil Company is drilling at Fruit Oil Bay, Alaska. That's the depth that you would see 40,000 feet from that airplane to the ground. Now, they cannot go through that strata and produce that oil until they've gotten the price of crude oil to $150 a barrel, and they've got trouble. The elite, the elite created a crisis in the Middle East to take the price of crude oil to $150 a barrel, and the first country that they created the crisis in was Egypt. It was a little over a year ago. They ousted Mubarak. You heard me correctly. Our State Department, yes, the United States of America, the audacity to go in and take over a country to depose its leader. And at the time, I was so upset over what was happening until I called my elitist friend and I said, what is going on in the Middle East? He told me the entire story. I was so dumbfounded until I went in studio and produced a three-hour DVD series entitled The Middle East, The Rest of the Story. And I tell in it everything that the elite were going to do in taking over Egypt and giving it to the Muslim Brotherhood, taking over Libya, and deposing Gaddafi. They couldn't get rid of him so easily. They finally had to murder him. They said next they were going into Syria. Oh, are you getting the message? I hope you're hearing this. They said, we'll next go into Syria, and we'll take it over and give it to the Muslim Brotherhood. They gave me the nations, the list of them, one after the other, that would be overthrown for the purpose of creating chaos in the Middle East, and they were going to turn those nations over to the Muslim Brotherhood, and they thought that by one year after the time they began in Egypt, that they would have created such chaos that they would have the price of crude oil to $150 a barrel. They would have the price of gold, Chris. Yes, you heard me correctly. They told me this. And, folks, if you have any doubt about your gold, don't you dare get rid of it. Don't you get discouraged over the fact that it stayed the same for a while. You have never seen the like of what's happening, fixing to happen to gold and silver prices. Gold, now this is a prediction. Please put it down in your notes. Put it beside your calendar. You must, whenever you see it happen, say, I heard it on Gold Seek Radio. I'm telling you in advance, gold is going to $3,000 an ounce. Silver is going to $75 an ounce. You better buy up every ounce that you can get. 
You better hold it. It's the only way that you're going to protect your assets. And I'm not saying this just because I'm on Chris' program, Gold Seek Radio, today. I'm saying it, and I and I'd say it on any radio show today. I beg of you, you must go to Chris and take care of this matter immediately, and and get out a paper and secure your assets. The price of crude oil is going to $150 a barrel. Now, what is happening in Syria, and why did they shut down the drilling with the Liberty Rig? They had to complete their program. Because of Assad, oh, my goodness, he, he has literally bucked the elite of the world. He has bucked our State Department. And Assad in Syria has postponed the elite's program approximately six months. I hope you caught this. They have fought this thing. They've tried to get rid of Assad every way possible. This was their next nation to give to the Muslim Brotherhood and create chaos. Now, two things. Jot them down because you want to go on the Internet and look at this right now, after this program is over. Don't change that dial now. You're going to want to hear the rest of this. Right now, while you're listening to Gold Seek Radio and Chris and Lindsey Williams, Russia is moving out of Syria. Did you catch this? You'll hear it on the national news. You can go and, and see it. It just started happening a matter of hours ago. Russia now is pulling out its warships. It has said to Assad, we will not give you. I want to give you some details so that you'll know what, that, that I'm ta- know what I'm talking about. And, and po- please, when the elite talk to me, they tell me these things. And, and I'm begging of you to listen because it's going to affect your lifestyle so much. Russia has canceled the largest scale naval exercise. They dubbed it Caucasus 2012. They, the, the warships uh, from the three fleets, the Northern, the Baltic, and the Black Sea, they, uh, they have stopped all, any action in Syria whatsoever. Syria, President Assad, has been notified that Russia is halting military aid to Syria. Moscow is moving out its warships right now as you're hearing this program, and they're dubbing this uh, the, the only naval ship, I should say, left in Syria right now is a Navy PT-138 uh, shipyard, which is very insignificant, and they'll be moving it out in a very short period of time. Why? I've often been asked the question, do the elite of the world control Russia and China? And every time my answer is positively, just as much as they do America. It's just that they do it in a little different manner. Now, you remember that when the fighting in Syria really got rough, uh, America threatened to step in with troops. Uh, The U.N. said, we're going to do something. Uh, Great Britain sent in her warships, her very latest of warships. And at that point, Russia, now you remember this about six months ago, Russia, Mr. Putin, said, don't you dare touch Syria. You, you, you get back. Uh, you, you move. Uh, we will come in if you do. And I have never seen Hillary Clinton back down so fast in my life. Great Britain back down. The United Nations back down. Everybody stopped everything and let Assad carry on with his massacre program for the last six months. And all the time, the elite were pushing our State Department to do everything possible to take over Syria so they could give it to the Muslim Brotherhood. Folks, this is reality in what's happening in government right now. Well, finally, they got to Russia. You you heard me correctly. Finally, the elite were able to persuade Mr. Putin. I don't know what method they, what strong-arm method they used to do it. Russia could not afford to do this. I mean, it's making them look horrible. Uh, this is the first time that Russia has threatened anybody since the Cold War. And for them now to back out of Syria, I mean, it, it's showing that Russia uh, is giving in to the elite. And right now, as you are hearing this program, they're moving all their warships out. They've taken away their arms shipments to Syria. And Assad, if he had any sense whatsoever, he'd get on the next jet airplane and leave as fast as he could. He's dead. Syria is going to be given to the Muslim Brotherhood. This is that process. Now, the next step that you need to look at in order to prove all this, I'm giving you so many things this morning. I want you to go and prove this for yourself and see the progression of it all. 
you need to go to YouTube, and if you will go to retired General Wesley Clark, oh, please do this. It's only about uh, four to five minutes long. Retired General Wesley Clark gave a speech. It's on YouTube, and in his speech, he said that he walked into the State Department of the United States of America one day, and when he walked in, they said to him, we are going to overthrow certain nations within the next period of a certain period of time. Yes. Yeah, he, he was dumbfounded. He said, what are you talking about? America is going to overthrow these nations in this period of time? Now, folks, you must see this. This is not Lindsey Williams talking. This is retired General Wesley Clark. What they told him is the same thing that my elite friends told me a little over one year ago when I came out with my DVD series, twenty uh, uh, the Middle East, the rest of the story, and told everything they were going to do. And Wesley Clark heard it in the State Department one morning when he walked in. And there's one thing I want you to hear very, very carefully in General Wesley Clark's speech. He said that he was told that the last nation that would be overthrown, are you, please catch this, same thing that happened in Iraq, the same thing we did in Egypt, the same thing we did in Libya at the order of the elite, our, our Congress people, our president are following, are following orders from the elite, exactly as they told me over a year ago they were going to do it. They do control Washington. They do control our president. The elite do exist. And please, listen to Wesley Clark when he gives the name of the last nation that will be overthrown, and you are going to be dumbfounded. If you heard it just from Lindsey Williams on Gold Seek Radio, you'd laugh at me. When you hear it from the State Department of the United States of America, as told by retired General Wesley Clark, you're going to have to give this a second thought. Here it is. Wesley Clark said that he was told that the final nation, that, that they've taken over Egypt, they've got Libya, they've got Syria now, and then there's two or three others, and the last nation that they're going to overthrow is Saudi Arabia. Please, listen to this as General Wesley Clark gives it. And that's exactly what I was told a year ago, and I said it, and some people have laughed at me. They, there's one nation after the other in the Middle East in order to create such chaos that they can bring crude oil to the price of $150 a barrel, gold is going to $3,000 an ounce, silver to $75 an ounce. They want to bring in the New World Order under their auspices, their way, and a new worldwide currency backed by gold and silver is the reason they will take the price of gold and silver to that height is in order to be able to back the new world currency with it, and they had to stop drilling with the Liberty Rig at Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, even though BP Oil Company has got $1 billion already invested in the rig. They had to stop drilling long enough to create the chaos they wanted in the Middle East because Assad has set them back for six months in their program, and Gaddafi in Libya set them back two months so they're approximately eight months behind in their program to get the price of crude oil to $150 a barrel. And as a result, they can't finish drilling through that strata with the Liberty Rig till they get the price of crude oil there. Chris, I don't know what to say. I'm sure you must notice the almost exasperation in my voice today as I'm trying to help people understand a picture out there that is, that, that if you know about it, you have time to do something about it. Chris, do, do you think I'm explaining it in such a way that it's getting across to the listening audience? Pastor Williams, I think it's crystal clear. I know that our listeners have been bracing for $50 plus silver. Given the fact that the inflation since 1980 is up about threefold, you just simply do the math on uh, $50 silver in 1980. That gives us a projection of almost 140 silver. If things really get out of hand this time, and maybe even $5,000 gold. But I, I like the fact that you're taking this incrementally, one step at a time, instead of throwing out pie-in-the-sky numbers. And I think your fundamental analysis here on the geopolitical scene is essential. So please continue, sir. 
Well, I, I'm dumbfounded as the elite tell me things. And as I see these things unfolding right in front of our eyes, I, I, I sometimes get so excited. I, I just say I must tell the entire world. And that's the reason I consider it a privilege to be on Gold Seek Radio today. Now, we have right now two desperate situations in the world. Number one, the elite are desperate. They are eight months behind in their program. You already should have $6 a gallon gasoline at the gas pump. They are behind because of Syria. Now that Assad is, for all practical purposes, dead in the saddle, he's gone. I, mean, I wish to goodness I could get to him and tell him, leave your country as fast as you can, get out. Russia has forsaken you, and it's the only hope you had of even being able to survive. They will turn Syria over to the Muslim Brotherhood, and after that it will be the other nations in line, as you heard me say it approximately one year ago. You have a second desperate situation right now. And this one concerns me just as much as the elite, because... When the elite get desperate, they do desperate things. And how they persuaded Mr. Putin of Russia to back off when it's hurting his credibility horribly, how they ever persuaded him to do it, I don't have the slightest idea. They haven't told me that. But I know that they have they persuaded him to back off so that Assad is gone and Syria is to be taken over. And mark my words, you'll see it in the national media. Hillary Clinton will take credit for it. The United Nations will take credit for it. They'll say our State Department did it. Yeah, they'll take credit for every bit of this. The truth of the matter is Assad held them off for six months. Now, you have a second desperate situation in the nation right now. You have a president who, as of yesterday, according to the polls, is 10 points behind. I'm not going to get much into this situation except to tell you what my elitist friend have told me. I'm not going to deal with the next presidential election. I'm not going to tell you who's going to win or who's going to lose. I'm merely going to give you the facts. That's what I always try to do, is give the facts, but you make up your mind. But only if you know the facts can you spare your dinner table and save your house heartache. You remember back, oh, I guess it was probably six months ago, there was a pipeline that was to be built across Canada. And at the time, the President of the United States of America said, I will let you know within approximately uh, a few days, he, he gave the date, that I will let you know whether the United States of America is going to approve uh, and have any part whatsoever in this pipeline or not. Uh, he waited two weeks after the date that he said he would give his opinion as to what America would do before he said we won't have any part in it. I knew something was wrong, and I called up my elite friend, and I said, people, please, this could have come from nowhere except one of them who know everything that goes on behind closed doors. I called him on the phone, and I said, what is going on with this pipeline across Canada? I don't think I've ever heard him so mad. He was livid. He was angry. I said, what's going on? He said, chaplain. This president double-crossed the elite and canceled out on that pipeline in favor of his Muslim Brotherhood friends. And then he made a statement that I never thought I'd hear one of the elite make. He said, this man is a Muslim. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. What are you talking about? He said, do you notice that he can't? He waited two weeks in order to say what his opinion was going to be about the cross-Canada pipeline? And I said, Yeah, I did, and I wondered why. He said he was waiting on his Muslim Brotherhood friends, Saudi Arabia and others, to give him major amounts of funding for his next presidential campaign running. And he said after he got what he wanted, he canceled out on that pipeline. We need that pipeline as the elite. We had to have it in order to bring that oil from the Liberty Rig at Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, where we eventually wanted the pipeline to end up. And he said, this man has double-crossed the elite. Well, I kept watching week after week to see what was going to happen because I knew they were mad. And I said, watch out. The elite may turn against him. And they did. And you have seen it. Now you think, and please go and look this up for yourself. Only about maybe three weeks ago, the 
the Wash. Let's see, the uh, I think it was the Washington Times. Uh, you couldn't find a more liberal newspaper in, in America anywhere. They came out with the most scathing article about Mr. Obama I have ever seen. And when I saw it, I said the elite did it. You know, they control the media. And, and I said, yes. Now they are expressing themselves. They've turned their back on this man. And now it's been one liberal media. You, you saw the Harvard professor. Yeah, last week you saw the Harvard professor who came out with his expose on our present president and literally cut him apart and spit him out. You, a Harvard professor does not do this. He could get fired unless the elite were behind it. And, and I said, yep. It's going to be one step after the other. Then the polls on yesterday said that he was 10 points behind. This man is desperate because the elite have turned their back on him, and my elite friends have told me that if they have their way, they will not have him back in as president again. Why? He has double-crossed them one time after the other. Now, we have a desperate president who wants to get reelected. We have a desperate elite who are behind in their program of chaos in the Middle East and turning these countries over to the Muslim Brotherhood, they want the price of crude oil to $150 a barrel as soon as they can get it there. And they want certain things to take place in America. Uh, and, and what's happening is creating a situation out there right now that you desperately need to keep your ear to the track, so to speak, and watch what is happening, because it is positively going to affect the lifestyle of every American out there. And we, we've got some situations that frighten me, because if the elite want that price to $150 a barrel so bad, that at this point I think they might do most anything. And I, up until the time that I saw Russia begin to pull out of Syria, I wondered if they wouldn't maybe do something extremely desperate and close the Strait of Hormuz. Well, now it, that they get the Assad out very quickly, Russia's pulling out just a matter of time until Assad is gone. Whatever method they use to get rid of him, turn it over to the Muslim Brotherhood. Maybe they won't do something drastic uh, in relation to the uh, Strait of Hormuz, where between 30 and 40 percent of the world's oil supply travels on any given day. Now, I've been asked a question, how does this fit into Israel? Well, my elitist friends don't even talk about Israel anymore. It used to that they said a few things about Iran, but don't talk about that anymore. So I'm, based on what I'm hearing from my elitist friends, I'm going to really stick my neck out and make a prediction on your program today, Chris. And this is just a prediction based on what I'm hearing from my elitist friends. I don't think I've said this on any radio show so far. Uh, I'm going to predict that you probably, according to the, the elite right now, don't need a conflict between Iran and Israel. And, and I don't think you're going to see it. I think you can relax somewhat in, in relation to that. But they are going to take over one Middle East country after the other as rapidly as they possibly can now. And then the last one, which will be a desperate situation, will be when they go into Saudi Arabia and create havoc there, because Saudi Arabia is our number one foreign supplier of crude oil. Uh, now, this relates to two things. Please write these down. Number one, the Liberty Rig at Crude Oil Bay, Alaska. It will begin drilling again whenever they can see that price of crude oil begin to escalate very rapidly. And whenever they go through that strata, they're going to bring in the largest oil pool ever discovered on the face of the earth. BP failed in the Gulf of Mexico. BP is now trying it in the Arctic Ocean. Now, there are two things in relation to the Liberty Rig, and you need to, you need to go and look at this on YouTube. Uh, whenever you go to Liberty Rig, go to BP Oil Company, and their statement that they made whenever they stopped drilling with the Liberty Rig, and there's one very short paragraph in that statement that tells a thousand stories. And when I read it, I immediately went to my latest friend, and I said, what is this? In there is a very short paragraph that says, we are beefing up, or that's not the words they use, but they are making stronger. They, they are doing some things to the Liberty Rig in order to keep it from, hap keep from happening what happened in the Gulf of Mexico. 
the, the, this period of time that they're shutting down anyway because of the Middle East and not getting the price of crude oil where they want it to go yet, they're also taking time to do something to the Liberty Rig to make it stronger so that when it goes through that strata, they won't have happened at the Arctic Ocean what they had happened in the Gulf of Mexico. Do you realize that if happened in the Arctic Ocean on Gull Island with the Liberty Rig, what happened in the Gulf of Mexico, do you realize it would contaminate the entire Arctic Ocean? I mean, it, it would be a horrifying situation. They are expecting upwards of 40,000 pounds per square inch of pressure whenever they go through that strata. In fact, they're making preparations for 50 and 60,000 pounds per square inch of pressure, which is more than any oil field has ever recorded. Russia didn't even record those kind of pressures whenever they went down with that Cola ST3 wells. And because of this, they're beefing up the Liberty Rig in order to make it capable of handling it so they won't have happened. That one little simple paragraph that BP wrote in their report about why they were stopping drilling with the Liberty Rig tells so many stories. Many of you have heard me say, when you've heard me on radio programs, that when I lived with the elite for those three years, one of the first things I learned was to listen to their buzzwords. They will tell you everything in advance, uh, what, they, uh, what they're going to do, if you know how to understand what they're saying. And, and I call it buzzwords. Uh, the national media is their mouthpiece, and Hollywood is their perversion. And they say through movies a lot of things that most of you don't catch. They say a lot of things in the national media, like years and years ago. You remember old Daddy Bush? He said, thousand points of light. Well, how many people understood that? Uh, very few. He used to use the expression, new world order. Did anybody understand what he was saying back uh, 25 years ago? No. I didn't understand it. Do I today? You better believe I do. I know exactly what the new world order is today. I knew exactly what he meant by a thousand points of light and all those other expressions he used. This is what I call buzzwords. And in this communique that BP put out, uh, and it's right there for you to find if you want to go look at it and prove everything I'm saying, Nothing's hidden. This is not hearsay, hope so, think so, possibly could be. This is not Williamsology. This is directly from the elite. You will find in that communique that BP has got a bunch of buzzwords. And tune your brain to be able to understand them whenever they give them to you on the media because it can help you to understand exactly what they're doing. Now, here is the last thing that the elite have done for me personally, which I am extremely appreciative. Uh, and and, and I, some people ask me oftentimes, Chaplain Williams, why do you think these people do these things for you? And the only thing I can think of is, do you realize that the majority of the elite in this world have never come in contact with a chaplain before? Never. I mean, they, don't go, they don't have to go to anybody's church. They rule the world anyway. Uh, I was on that oil field. They were not in my church. And as a result... I think that probably they consider me kind of like a little mas mascot. And over the years, out of appreciation for what I did in giving three years of my life as a chaplain, I think they tell me things that maybe unless you knew exactly how to discern them from the liberal media, you probably wouldn't pick up on it. Well, just recently, the elite told me, chaplain, in light of what's about to take place, uh you need to do the, these following things. They said, for your family, uh, we'd like to help you. And you need to do this uh, for your children, for your wife, for your family. These are some precautions that you need to make. And they gave me the formula. Now, Chris, I don't know how much time we have left. And I am perfectly willing to give this formula over your broadcast, if you haven't heard it before. Maybe you caught it on some other show. I don't know. But they told me, they said, Chaplain, this is how you can know before the financial collapse is going to take place. You can know it a few months in advance, at least a few weeks in advance, in order to give you time to do everything that you need to do with your paper, if you still have any left. And they said, Chaplain, here is a formula that we're giving you so that you will know. And they didn't tell me not to give it to anybody. But they gave me the formula. 
for how you will know. Now, keep something in mind. In 1929, before the, the Great Depression, 1929 through 1933, there were many people who made great fortunes. Not everybody stood in soup lines in New York and Chicago and San Francisco. There were many, many people who made great fortunes. And the only reason they did is because they knew in advance that the Great Depression was going to take place. They secured their assets accordingly. And when it happened, they were able to buy up uh, great industry and, and other things and, and make great fortunes. Now, there is no reason for any person to have to suffer after this financial crisis takes place. You can protect your household. You don't need to lose sleep at night. There is no reason to look behind bushes and look for black helicopters. If you know what's going to happen ahead of time, and I believe that these people have told me exactly what's going to take place, I know that they told me about the Liberty Rig. I know that Syria, I'm seeing it right before my eyes today as Russia is pulling out. I know Assad is gone. They turned it over to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and Libya. They're going to do it in Syria, mark my words. You will eventually see Saudi Arabia overthrown. I know this sounds horrible, but they and it relates to the Bakken oil field. Now, there's one thing here that's very significant also. I'll just take it in passing. The Bakken oil field in North and South Dakota and Montana is going full speed ahead. And if there's anyone out there in the listening audience of Gold Seek Radio who can't find a job, you're having trouble supporting your family, all you've got to do is go to North or South Dakota and Montana right now, and you can make big money. I just came back from there. I talked with some people who are on the field, and ordinary people as well as others who are drilling there. There is an oil boom on. They are begging for people of every kind. There are great fortunes to be made in oil right now in North and South Dakota and Montana. The elite timed it wrong. Did you hear me? I was told three or four years ago, maybe five years ago, how much oil was in the Bakken field in North and South Dakota and Montana. I have it right here in my email files right now where the elite sent it to me. Uh, probably three to four years ago, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing, that that much oil was there. They knew it, and they were not producing it while America was having a financial problem. But it's all a part of that program. Now, they timed the Bakken field and its production to the takeover of these nations in the Middle East. This goes around the world. I mean, this literally is is a, a worldwide new world order. They timed the Bakken Fields production in what they thought it would take them in the overthrow of these nations and turning them over to the Muslim Brotherhood in the Middle East for the purpose of getting the price of crude oil to $150 a barrel, and they missed it by eight months. You heard me. The Bakken Fields going full speed ahead, and they can't stop it. Now, they could stop the drilling with the Liberty Rig because BP Oil Company controls that. They could not stop the Bakken Oil Reserve because it's, it, it, there are too many wildcatters up there. There are too many people uh, in, involved in it. So they're, they're going to have to suffer a little bit until they can get the price to $150 a barrel. Again, are you beginning to see the picture of the elite are desperate? Our president is desperate. We have a situation where most anything can happen at any time, and I am making no predictions as to what's going to happen. I'll let you figure that out. But the elite have told me that for the sake of myself and my family, that I need to be aware of certain things and to secure my assets. So, Chris, according to what you would like and how much time we have left, uh, I'll go into this accordingly. Hope by now that you are hearing enough proof, such as uh, uh, retired General Wesley Clark, such as what has just happened with Russia, uh, the other details I've given you, I hope by now you're learning to trust what I'm saying. You have those pencils and paper handy. I want to tell you how you can know and protect your family. You need to write down one word. It's a word that I had not even paid any attention to up until a year ago. 
and and the word is derivatives. That's right. I, I probably will have to even spell it because uh, some people may know what they are. I'm quite sure Chris does. There are others who may not. D e r i v a t i v e s derivatives. Now, first of all, I'd like to tell you what don't pay any attention to. Now, this comes straight from them. I'm just I'm just passing on to you what I have been told that the elite have told me so that you can make preparations according to them. I, I, I'm trying to help you every way I can. Please let me. The elite said to me, Chaplain, don't pay any attention to Wall Street. You, you heard correctly. I know most of you listen to the Wall Street Report every morning. I don't even turn on the news anymore and listen to it. They said to me, they said, Chaplain, don't pay any attention whatsoever to Wall Street and what's happening in the stock market. They said it means nothing. It's completely controlled by the plunge protection team every day. And they said anyone who waits until after Wall Street collapses, they've lost it. That's right. You, you heard me correctly. If you wait until you see the Wall Street stock market go down uh, uh, massively, you've lost it. That's too late. You, you can't wait that long. They said, Chaplain, don't pay any attention to what's happening with the euro. And this was surprising to me. Don't pay any attention to the euro. They said, we control what happens in Europe. Now, this was proven by what happened in Greece. You remember nearly every financial newsletter out there uh, six or eight months ago was saying, oh, when Greece defaults, Greece declares bankruptcy, Greece has more problems, the European Union, the euro is going to collapse. Well, I went to my latest friend and I said, where does Greece fit into all of this? He said, Chaplain, don't pay any attention to it. They said, whenever Greece collapses, it's not going to affect the euro at all. Now, I'm going to make another prediction here. Whenever you see Italy and Spain and the others over there in the PIGS group, whenever you see them get worse and worse and worse, just like Greece, that is not an indicator of what the elite are doing. That only tells you that the elite have so bought these countries in their debt that they can totally control them more when they get ready to take them over for their new world order. That's all it means. And they said to me, they said, Chaplain, don't pay any attention to the euro, nor to the European Union, because anybody who waits until the euro collapses, they've lost it. They don't have time to do anything about it. They said, there's one thing you need to watch. And I said, what is that? They said, Chaplain, you've got to do a crash course on derivatives. Well, believe you me, I did. And I was amazed at what I found. And this is what I'm trying to beg you to do. You must know what derivatives are and to know how to discern when a crack comes in the derivative market. Now, I'm going to give you a name, and then you can go and look him up for yourself. In fact, okay, let me give you his name first. His name is Tom Fowler. Tom Fowler, about 40 years ago, was a young man on Wall Street, and he became a Wall Street insider. Uh, became quite well known in the financial circles, and uh, he finally couldn't stand the corruption no longer and left. And when I was put in touch with him, uh, they said, oh, Tom Fowler can tell you the story. Well, Tom Fowler did. Tom Fowler said that about 35, 40 years ago, he was sitting in his office on Wall Street. That's back when you could look up at the Twin Towers before they were destroyed. And he said that one of his superiors told him that he needed to start selling derivatives. At the time, he didn't even know what they were. They tried to explain it to him. Only a few days, maybe weeks later, uh, an individual came back to him and explained to him what derivatives are and why they were selling them worldwide to the big banks. I mean, the biggest things out there getting the derivative market going. Well, he was told that the reason they were developing the derivative market, and this is back 40 years ago, do you realize how far in advance they, they planned the real estate bubble burst? Do you realize how far in advance they planned QE1 and QE2? You, you heard me correctly, and you'll understand in a moment. And then how far in advance they planned the fifth trillion dollar deficit that they admit to 
in our federal government right now, and Congress can't even come up with a budget for over a year. Do you realize why they they have chosen the presidents they've chosen for the last few presidents to do exactly what they want? This this goes back 40 years ago. And then they told Tom Fowler, we, uh, now please, catch this very carefully, I'm going to say it slowly, we are creating the derivative market for the purpose of being able to bring about a worldwide financial crash and collapse whenever we get ready for it to happen. Now, he states this. In fact, after I had known Tom Fowler for a period of time, I asked him one day, I said, Tom, have you ever told this story anywhere? He said, no. I said, have you ever appeared on any DVD or any radio program or television program? He said, no. I said, would you be willing to? Now, keep in mind, Tom left Wall Street. He, he couldn't stand the corruption any longer. And he said, yeah. He said, I think it's time for America to know this. Well, he did. He flew to the West Coast, where I live, and spent a number of days with me. And we did a, a, a college education, no, literally, this is a mini college education course on DVD of finances. It's called Secrets of the Elite. We did it just, just recently. Three and one half hours long. You watch it on your television set in your home there. And Tom Fowler and two other people in the financial world came here and helped me produce this. And Tom told his story. In fact, he was so impressed that after he got here, he realized just how important this is to America and to, to your dinner table. Right there listening on Gold Seek Radio today, he actually went so far as to give out his telephone number on the DVD so that people could call. Now, he, he, no, no, he, he, he does, he's no competition to you, Chris. He doesn't sell gold and silver. Uh, but this man merely tells his story. And he, he went into the details of derivatives. Now, the elite told me, they said, Chaplin, if you know how to discern the derivative market in advance before it's collapse, it's going to collapse. That's right. Now, it's estimated that the derivative market today is over one quadrillion. I know this is hard to even comprehend. I can't even think in these terms. It's a thousand trillions. Yes. And, and okay, I, I, must, I must sidetrack here very quickly. QE1. QE2, when the banks were given the money under QE1 and QE2, and they were supposed to lend it out to private enterprise, small businesses, the housing market, and get America's economy going again with that QE1 and QE2 money, did they do it? No, they did not. I'm going to tell you where they put it. This was just given to me by Tom here the other day. He said, Chaplin, they, that's the reason the economy hasn't, hasn't gotten back to going again. They don't want it going. Uh, this is the reason you, you haven't seen the housing market pick up. Now, small businesses be able to get loans. A man said to me the other day, he uh, does a multi-million dollar business. He said, Chaplin, if I had a million dollars in the bank, in Bank of America, and I went there and asked them to allow me to get a small business loan of a half a million, they wouldn't give it to me. I said, how do you know? He said, I tried it recently. But you, you can't get money now. The banks, what have they done with it? They took the money that was given to them by way of the American taxpayer through the Federal Reserve, and instead of investing it in America and getting America going again, they invested in the derivative market. Two hundred and fifty trillion dollars, Bank of America. We also see it in Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. Now on their balance sheets, over two hundred and fifty trillion. And the really frightening thing that I have a feeling you're building up to here, Mr. Williams, eventually that house of cards will implode, taking down the largest banks in this country. You're exactly right, Chris. You're a step ahead of me. And this is, you know, I had no way of knowing this. Do you, folks, out there listening to the audience, do you realize that I'm nothing but just an ordinary, everyday minister of the gospel? That's all I am. I'm just a preacher. By the providence of God, I sat with the elite of the world, and I have no financial background like Chris does. I have no financial background like Tom Fowler has. I don't, I don't know what Mr. Bernanke knows. The only thing I know is the elite. And I know some of them personally. 
And they've told me these things. You ready for the figures? You have that pencil and paper handy? J.P. Morgan Chase, today, that's right, on the fourth day of, of September, J.P. Morgan Chase, today, has an exposure to the derivative market of, where they use your money. And they leveraged it and, and, and used it over and over and over as they do in derivatives. J.P. Morgan Chase has an exposure to the derivative market today of $70.1 trillion. I just got these figures the other day. Citibank has an exposure today to the derivative market of $52.1 trillion. That's your QE1, QE2 money that was supposed to go to help get America going again. Bank of America has an exposure of fifty point one trillion. Goldman Sachs has an exposure today of forty four point two trillion. They admit to it. And you're exactly right in what you said a moment ago, Chris. There is over a two hundred and ninety trillion dollar exposure that the taxpayers of the United States of America would be obligated for if the derivative market collapses. And if I could just add a couple of scary thoughts to your points here, most of that quarter of a quadrillion dollars of derivatives or weapons of financial destruction, as Warren Buffett termed them, they are unregulated. This is something that very few people are talking about. You think options and futures are scary, where you can lose all of your initial investment or more. Imagine derivatives where there is virtually zero regulation. The next problem is there is interest rate exposure. Now, we all know that the Fed and the Bank of England and the European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan are all colluding to keep interest rates low, Pastor Williams. What happens when when that starts to unwind and the carry trades begin to unwind and interest rates go up, as we saw near the end of the commodities boom in the 1970s, all of those derivatives go belly up. Chris, everything you have just said is true. You are a very knowledgeable gentleman. I was asked on a radio show the other day, Chaplain Williams, please tell us, why would the elite destroy their own country? Now, you, you can see from what Chris just said that both America, the European Union, Southeast Asia, China, Russia, everybody is going to be affected. Nobody's going to be exempt. When the new world order comes in, it is going to be a financial collapse of such epic proportion that the world has never in its 6,000 years of biblical recorded history ever seen anything like this. And it's about to take place. I am not predicting it'll happen this month nor next, not even in six months, but it is going to take place. They already have it planned, and it may take place tomorrow morning. It could. They have everything ready. And a person asked me the other day, they said, Chaplain, why would the elite destroy America? You're going to be amazed at my answer. The elite are not destroying America nor Europe, nor Southeast Asia, nor China, nor Russia. Folks, did you catch that? They are not destroying America. They are taking over America. You must, please, I plead with you, get my book, To Seduce a Nation. You'll find it on Amazon Kindle. We just put it up there recently. It explains the mindset of the elite. I wrote an entire book of over 200 pages explaining the mindset of the elite entitled To Seduce a Nation. And it, you, you'll be able to understand the thought patterns of these people, the mindset of these people. The name of the game is control. The elite are not destroying America. The elite are taking over America so that they can bring it back under their auspices of the New World Order and control the people and the country forever. Are you catching this? They are not destroying America. They are taking over America. All of the financial crisis that we've got today is for the purpose of bringing in the New World Order. The only way they could bring in the New World Order is to get Americans to the point that that was devalued, that it's lost its purchasing power to the point that your children are crying and begging for bread, not because the bread's not in the grocery store, plenty of food and bread and water in the grocery stores. There's going to be no lack of that whatsoever. But you will not have currency 
that has enough purchasing power to go to the grocery store and purchase that bread whenever your child starts crying, and you'll say, oh, please, 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 New World Order, I'll do anything. I'll give me a new currency. Give me a new constitution. Just, just come back and help me. Just do anything to get me out of this mess. And the average American is going to roll over, belly up, and accept the new world order under all of its auspices. And I'm going to make another statement that's going to astound you. And I've had many talk show hosts lately to kind of put me on the spot with this one, but I have to give you what, I, what I've been told. They do not want revolution. I know. This is exactly opposite to what you're hearing from nearly every website out there. I can only tell you what they tell me. The elite do not want revolution. They do not want major crisis. They did away with the Wall Street protesters. Yeah. If you notice, you don't see them around anymore. Why? They didn't want them around. What do they want? They want a takeover under the auspices of the New World Order and do it the way that the elite want it done, and they have told me how they want it done. And all they're doing is taking over control. That's all they want. The name of the game is control. They are not destroying America. They will bring America back under their auspices under their control, under their system, and it won't necessarily be communism, and it won't be Muslimism, and it won't be some other ism. It's going to be under the auspices of the New World Order, according to what Daddy Bush said back down to over 20 years ago, and that's what they want, and they'll do it by, this, by letting the derivative market crash, and this is what the elite told me. They said, Chaplin, if you want to spare your household and save your dinner table, they said, you've got to know how to know before the derivative market collapses, and I'm going to give it to you right now. This is what they gave me. They said, Chaplin, whenever you see a, a crack come in the derivative market, you will know that every piece of paper that you've got, you've got to get out of immediately, every piece, whether it be a 401K, an IRA, a mutual fund, I don't care what it is, a retirement fund you won't be able to depend on, the paper you've got in the bank you won't be able to depend on, the Federal Reserve note is going to collapse. I did not say the Federal Reserve note would be done away with. What they said to me was that by the end of 2012, the, the a uh, dollar will be dead. They did not say it would be non-existent. They said it would have lost so much of its purchasing power, you will have trouble buying at the grocery store what you're going to need. And when you're paying 6 and $7 a gallon at the gas pump, you, you've you got to realize that it's not the gasoline that's going up in price. It's the dollar you're purchasing the gasoline with has lost its purchasing power because the Federal Reserve has turned up the printing presses full speed ahead and put in QE1 and QE2 and collapsed the dollar. And it's all done intentionally. Now, this is going to bring about the, the, the way that you will know before it happens is a crack in the derivative market. How will you know? You'll know it by three things. Number one, and they said to me, Chaplin, you're going to have to really do a, uh, a crash course on derivatives. They said, number one, currency wars. I said, what do you mean? They said, whenever you see currency wars begin, you know that you're getting close to the time that the derivative market is going to crash. Now, you're going to have to do your homework. Write down April the 14th, 2012. On April the 14th of 2012, China did something that the average person did not pick up on it. I would not either if I had not been told it. I was dumbfounded when I saw it. China on that date said, we are going to allow our currency to float, the one. We're going to allow it to float from 0.5 to 1% against the American dollar. To the average American, it didn't mean a thing. To me, it literally scared me beyond words. Do you realize that if China allowed their yuan to float to 1% against the American dollar instead of 0.5% where it is today, which, of course, would be double, 0.5 and 1 is, is a doubling of that 0.5, did you realize that every product on the shelves in Walmart and Safeway would double in price? 
and they could do it. And this is what is known as a currency war. And what they did on April the 14th was to threaten the United States of America and the American dollar exactly as the elite had told me they were going to do it when they got ready to. And it is known as a currency war. The second indication of this, and you're going to have to go back and look this up for yourself again, April the 11th, 2012. The president of Brazil came to the United States of America and met with our president, Dilma Rousseff. And when she met with the president, she said, you got, you need to go back and look up, probably somewhere on the Internet, you can look up what she said. She said, Mr. President, don't you dare bring in QE3. Don't you do it. She said, we, of Brazil and other countries, we do not have a Federal Reserve. We can't back our currency like you're doing the American dollar. You bring in to Folks, do you wonder why the Federal Reserve, they are desperate. I mean, the head of the Federal Reserve desperately needs QE3. Our president, in order to get reelected, desperately needs QE3. At this summit they had just the other day, he did not bring, announce QE3. Why? He's scared literally out of his pants. He knows what would happen if they brought in QE3. They would start a currency war of currency wars, and Mr. Del, Mrs. Delmer Rousseff of uh, Brazil said, you bring in QE3, and we will have to resort to a currency war. And Federal Reserve is scared to death to do it. Many folks forget the uh, general end of the British Empire, its global reign, is oftentimes attributed to the, the Suez Canal War with Egypt. Folks forget that the reason why Great Britain and France backed down against Egypt at the time was because the U.S. owned practically all of London's debt. We played the debt card in, in essentially a currency war, and we said, yeah, that's fine if you want to go attack Egypt over the Suez Canal, that's fine. We'll dump your debt on the market and it'll crush your currency. The parallel scenario where China, if they get upset with us because we go to QE3, which is inevitable, I believe, at this point, they could simply play the same card that we did against London and France 50 years ago, and it could virtually destroy our reserve currency status overnight, which would be the end of American reign globally, I believe. Chris, I am amazed at your wisdom. <laughs> I'm hearing I'm hearing things from you that I heard from them. Uh, I, I, I'm very impressed. All of your listeners, they should listen to you every day. I recommend every person at Gold Seek Radio that you listen to Chris Walstek every day. He's brilliant. No, 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 no. But I, I, it's listening to fine folks like yourself. I stand on the shoulders of giants for many, many years. Okay, very quickly write down the second and third item. A crack in the derivative market will be known because the trade wars began. I don't have time to explain that. Third one and the last one, which every person will hear about. And whenever you hear about this, you've probably waited too late. Whenever the Federal Reserve announces that they're going to increase interest rates, it's all over. It's gone. Uh, it's too late. A 1% rise in interest rates by the Federal Reserve will add $140 billion to the national debt. Would you go to our website? It's prophecyclub.com, P-R-O-P-H-E-C-Y-C-L-U-B.com, or go to our toll-free number, one 888-799-6111. We just finished producing, just recently, a three-and-one-half-hour DVD series entitled Secrets of the Elite. You will not only hear me, you'll hear some of the financial professionals of America on this DVD. It is a mini college education. Everything that I haven't given today, plus much more, is there. Now, I just added a few days ago a CD, not only the three DVDs of three and a half hours that you watch on your television. I produce a CD an hour and 12 minutes long. Please listen to it first. Whenever you get this series, listen to the CD first in your automobile as you're driving down the road. Uh, it's, in, it, it, it's everything that the elite told me to do for my house. They told me what to do, how to get out of paper, 
everything I should do. This entire series of three DVDs, one CD, can come your way. It's entitled Secrets of the Elite. I will. You can go on the web if you wish to get it to prophecyclub.com, or you can go to our toll-free number, 888-799-6111. Chris, it has been a privilege to be with you today. I thank you so very much for allowing me the time. If I could just throw in a couple of thoughts here uh, to bring it all together. You lay out this scenario that uh, you're essentially preaching to the choir here, sir, regarding the New World Order and how they don't mind how long it takes to bring their plans and machinations to fruition. If we look back in time, I kind of laid this out in Wealth Building Strategies on Amazon.com. How long has this struggle against the powers that be, the New World Order, the elitists, how long have we been waging this battle. And using the work of many, many fine individuals, I was able to sort of peer back in a time machine. We can go as far back as the inception of this country, the first federal bank, the second federal bank, then the War of 1812, you could argue, in my opinion, although many historians would disagree with me, was due to our struggle against the banking interest. They were trying to get a charter extended on the Federal Bank of the United States. Fast forward in time, even the uh, Civil War seems to have had its roots in this battle against the elitists and the banking interests at the time, another struggle against central banking, and it was eventually knocked down, but not forever. You know, then came the uh, crash, came to the conclusion that we need some type of force other than the power of J.P. Morgan to regulate our banking system. 1910 and 1913, the creature from Jekyll Island is finally established. Of course, it was over Christmas Eve. They pushed it through. And ever since that moment, cogs have been spinning silently behind the scenes for the downfall of this country. And fast forward 100 years from that date, and it looks like your collapse and bankruptcy is imminent. Chris, you're exactly right. Every person out there in your audience can prepare for this. You do not have to suffer. Uh, You can take care of the issues But may I beg you to do one thing before you do anything financially. Please go to the Bible. Please know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Please be sure that your spiritual house is on a solid foundation and not on sinking sand. When all of this comes, you can stand if you have a moral foundation, if you know Christ is your Savior. If you have the Bible as your guide, you can stand through all of this. Make that preparation first. It's so important, I think, for folks who will listen and those who are inclined, because ultimately finances and economics can only take you so far. The roadway that I see before us here as a nation You could have stockpiles of gold and silver. Ultimately, all you may have done is protect your purchasing power when a new currency is established. In the meantime, you're going to have to protect your family from things that even the best prepared individuals can imagine. You can't injure your family by taking some steps to prepare now. Pastor Williams, feel very blessed to have had you on the show today. So keep in mind that this studio door is always revolving. We look forward to your next visit with us, sir. God bless. Have a wonderful day, Chris. And thank you for the privilege of allowing me on your show today. 